You know, you're an athlete. What I need to potentially look at if I want to gain muscle mass. Hard gainer. You can look at is something like ibutamorin, right? What about uh, the opposite to that? What weight loss? The biggest success I've seen is to test a uh, brain function, brain clarity. That's probably one of my favorites. And then, I mean, if I had to take one, I had only, I would probably take the. A lot of people today will never learn how to push the limits because they don't even know what the limits are. When you know something bad for you, if you continue to just consume it and consume it, well, then you're just ignorant. Yeah, right? you yeah, should, yeah, yeah. And people don't want to admit that. But the truth is, obesity is a slow killer. How is God speaking to you? How is God moving to, to you and through you? Oh, man. It was when I got sick with type one. Yeah. I lost everything. Well, that's what's funny. God equips you for what you're going to be doing down the road, but you're not going to be equipped if you're not yeah. doing all the things you know you should be doing. Yeah. And we have people struggling financially with inflation. People are in business today. What's one message you want to share to America right now to help lead them into the next wave, the next best version of themselves? What I've been directing people to lately is. Let's get this money. So my guest today is none other than Jason Poston, born in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Now currently living in Prosper, Texas, one of my favorite city names, Prosper. Where you live? Prosper, Texas. <laughs> Why? Because I want to prosper. Well, that's what Jason's about. He is a fitness, wellness, and medical entrepreneur known for his achievements in bodybuilding, fitness modeling, and his presence on Netflix. It was called The Perfect Physique. Yes, sir. Oh, man. And uh, Jason competed in the Mr. Olympia four times placing his highest third place multiple times. And uh, we actually go to church together at Elevate Life, and we both love our wives named Sheena. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so Jason, welcome to the show, brother. Thank you. And that's yeah. rare. How many Sheenas do you know? Not too many. Not, it's, it's, it's a very rare name, you yeah. know? Yeah. And uh, I was calling her Zena uh, initially because of the warrior princess, you know, Zena, but uh, yeah. Sheena, but uh, yeah, interesting. But uh, yeah, correct. Yeah. Very rare name. Rare yeah. wives. Is it, is it, we have very rare wives. God bless our wives. Thank yes. you for our wives. So, uh, Jason, take us back. You know, you're an athlete. You know, you. we were just talking here off camera about uh, you in high school, constantly working out. You couldn't get no heavier than 170, 180 pounds. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about what uh, this athlete, this physique competitor, what were you like in high school? If, you, if I was hanging out with you in high school, what were you like? Man, well, my friends would check me. They'd say, I wasn't the most athletic. So, okay. but I, I, I was extremely competitive. So I wasn't born with the natural genetics or, or did, you know, my family have the money to put me in these elite schools. We didn't have a lot of that back then. There was like a couple programs. So I was just like your recreational athlete. And, um, you know, I, I still love sports. I played basketball, football, a uh, little bit of wrestling, loved hockey. Um, but it, it just didn't go well for me in high school even though I wanted it, like my heart desired is like, man, I want to be one of these best athletes. But my, my the only thing I was probably a leader at was running. Like really? I could run, I could run a 400 long distance. Oh, okay. You know, no hundred, 200, man. Yeah. That was the brothers, man. They were, <laughs> that was all my homies. They, they were smoking everybody, but a 400, I could hang and, a, and, and mile and yeah. you know, 1600 plus uh, cross country. So okay. that's what I was built for Okay, was lean, mean, thin. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I, start, I got interested in weights right after high school because um, you know, I had something going on with my eye too. And that really hurt me my senior year. I, uh, I went blind in this eye right here. Really? Yeah. I literally could, uh, couldn't see like your hand. You could raise up five fingers. I couldn't read them. Were you this. hit? Or was it no, I had a rare disease called, uh, what was it called? Keratoconus. It's where the eye forms tissue over the eye over and over and over and over. Wow. So, so it's like you're looking at a plastic. Wow. And you just can't. So I, it was slow. So I didn't realize what was wrong. Why I didn't go to the optometrist and get you, I don't know. But I just, you know, I used to be able to catch a ball, yeah. a slant route. Yeah. I couldn't even catch a slant. I couldn't catch it. a stop route. Wow. So the deep balls, I remember at the end of practice, just feeling like a bum. So yeah. I kind of just started to give up. It was, it was funny. Like, yeah, wow. I didn't get that checked. In basketball, couldn't hit a three anymore. I mean, if you toss me my keys, I couldn't even catch because my depth perception was all messed up. Yeah. So yeah. one eye sees good, the other eye is basically legally blind. So I had a I had a reparative surgery, and that that started my adult life. Was 19 years old, having going from not being able to see, and if I didn't wear corrective lenses, I mean I couldn't see people in the hallways. It, it was bad, I, you know. But I'd be freaking out, man. If that was, that I know, couldn't see out of one eye. And, I know because I couldn't it was, wear but contact. It's gradual, though. It, was it wouldn't wear contact. It was yeah. so deformed. I couldn't wear contact on it, and I, I was just so uh, had so much pride. I wouldn't wear glasses. Wow. You know, so, uh, yeah, I was 
glad to get it fixed through a, a cornea transplant. They actually put a, a dead person's cornea. Right now in your eye. Yeah, it's still on there. It was supposed <laughs> to reject it by now. They said it'll probably reject it in 10 years. You're the first person under the age of 25 that's ever done this surgery. It's We usually do this for older people. Wow. And yeah, so I mean, I remember it was ter awful surgery. It was not fun. Felt like you had sandpaper in your eye for like three months. You're on painkillers, trying to be comfortable, but then yeah. they take the sutures out one at a time as that tissue starts to form to your eye and boom you know but i was just happy even though it was painful like i can see like i can see you know this eye's still fine but this eye's almost 2020 and i've got yeah you know dead person's cornea. So they. praise god for Amen. the person that had the healthy cornea and they wanted they were like do you want to know who it was because you know oftentimes it, it's a children child and i said I kind of regret it because I wish I could honor that person's name. That, <laughs> but I said no, I'll pass. I was like, I didn't want to know. Yeah. And then, but here we are. I can see now, and that's what got me in the weights. I was like, okay, I'm back. Yeah. You know, I can play sports. So I was just hustling, playing sports. You know, uh, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do yeah. in this world and give back. And I knew, you know, I didn't want to do a lot of what I had seen, like my family go through of just hating their jobs. And so I got into fitness and, and this was 2000, probably two, 2003. Who was your, who was your inspirations? Was there like, like people like all Arnold all the time, but uh, what was your inspirations? Man, the inspiration um, early on were honestly like fitness personalities. Yeah, of course there was the bodybuilders. Yeah. And uh, funny story, a lot of the bodybuilders that I, that I looked up to, I ended up, they ended up becoming friends. That's so cool. And now like, I, you know, I can call them, text them right now and they're their buddies of mine. <laughs> so I never would have thought that would happen because I never thought I would have went pro. But at the time I was in, I, I like bodybuilders and full transparency. When I found out that a lot of the bodybuilders were just that big because of the steroids, I kind of was like, all right, I'm pivoting my inspiration to athletes and other people. Because you, you don't want to yeah, juice. Yeah, I didn't. I was scared of it. Was super, in my 20s, I was really scared of it. I mean, I was just against it. And I was all about being natural. But little did I know, I didn't know everything about those bodybuilders, right? Like, that's why if someone's, you know, say say someone smokes cigar. Well, mm -hmm. cigar is not mm -hmm. healthy for you necessarily either. There's, mm -hmm. There might be some fallback. Sure. But it's like, okay, well, you don't know how often they're doing it. You don't know, you know, when they're choosing to do that, uh, what they're celebrating. Um, and in a way, bodybuilding, even though it's, it's a lot more harsh, there is a healthy way yeah. to have doctor guidance and you know, with, to, with gear yeah to use oh, okay. the gear yeah okay. and so and there's there's a lot of people that abuse it and so i'm, I'm not i'm not coming on your podcast to normalize oh, it to say it's healthy <laughs> yeah. but i'm saying that i was very judgmental in my 20s and i said no but yeah those early guys like jay cutler ronnie coleman branch warren was in my hometown in grapevine and he had a gym in south lake i'd see him buying cartons of eggs this big from costco which they don't sell anymore which is Bull crap, which we need right now because yeah. we need a little bit of discount on food for me sure. and you. Yeah, yeah, with our family size, <laughs> yeah. if we could buy a box of eggs this big, yeah. we, would, we would. Yeah, but I think we just need to put our money together and buy a farm. I think that's what we need to do, dude. Let's <laughs> what we could call it. <laughs> I mean, there's a bunch of farms in uh, Sal Salina, Salina, yeah, Prosper. That's actually, we just flew back from you know, uh, we just mentioned I just flew back from Bora Bora. The food always internationally, you've traveled the world, the food yeah. internationally just tastes. Tastes different mm -hmm. than what we have here in America. Yeah, it just tastes it just just gets consumed. I can eat a whole meal overseas and not feel not feel full. Mm -hmm. You know, potatoes I I think you know stick out to me the most. They're the best. Yeah, yeah. Over out of country, yeah. You get some New Zealand. You're yeah. near New Zealand, kind of. That's right. That's I had right. some purple sweet potatoes in New Zealand one time. Oh yeah, that was real purple. But they really we had so meats good. from New Zealand. It, it, it tasted different. You know. Yeah. Yep. yep. So you know all that stuff. So yeah. Um, when, when you're looking at uh, bodybuilding and um, when, when did it start becoming more of a career for you? Like you started making money at it because it's more than just going to the gym, but you started earning income doing so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, I had been a trainer now for like five years. And I mean, I'm, I'm looking at every magazine out there. You know, back then, of course, that's all we had. We didn't have the internet really. Right. So magazines yeah. were it, man. Yeah. And, and man, you just stack of them in my room, <laughs> stack of them in the bathroom. I'm sitting there. Every, man, I was constantly reading workouts and going to the gym. I'd laminate them and go to, but, you know, then I became a trainer. So I was making workouts, I was programming. And I knew I wanted to market myself as a trainer uh, to get more clients and to just, just build my credibility. Mm -hmm. So I started doing little like fitness model contest there was no you know i wasn't a pro yet there was no division for the for the physique or the classic physique yet yeah. this is like 2007 
And I dabbled in. I was like, okay, so I'm going to diet. I mean, I had no clue what I was doing. You know, just, I was like, oh, I'll just drop fats, basically. I'm going to eat low fat diet. Well, yeah, I shredded up a little bit and I went and did a fitness model show. There were like 120 dudes and I won it, won the whole thing. Wow. I, I didn't expect to win. What about? This was in Dallas, the, wow. the Dallas Europa. So the Dallas Europa, there was four Europas all over the nation. And the Dallas Europa was the show here in Dallas. It was huge. No kidding. I mean, stars and man, all the big bodybuilders, uh, tons of fun stuff, all your big supplement companies, all the fitness models. Yeah. And that's like, I'm there, you know. Um, that's considered amateur though, right? Yeah. It okay. wasn't even a sanctioned yeah. event. This was yeah. like, if if your son yeah. is going to go try to win some fitness model contract yeah. or something, he goes yeah. to a fitness model tryout right. and they, they just interview him and they take pictures of him. And they say yeah. whether he win or not. That's what it was, except we were on stage. Mm. So it was physique before there was even physique in the IFBB. Right. Like the IFBB is International Federation of Bodybuilding. So that's organized. This was like a local sure. show where you could win a fitness model contract and 500 bucks. 500 and, bucks, that was yeah, the prize. That, yeah. nice. that was all, I mean, I <laughs> took it. It was free, I was For like, sure. it was great. So I won that. Yeah. And that's what's funny is like, you know, I look at God give me a little taste of where he wants me. Now it'd be like five years later. Yeah. Five years later, you know, IFBB announces, oh, we've got a new physique division where it's a fitness model look. And it's a it's a muscular look, you know, not we don't we don't want any bodybuilder look. We want, mm -hmm. you know, this symmetry. And you kind of just stand there front to back. And you know, the posing was hard and wearing the shorts was hard and all that, trying to look good. But basically it was just about you either look good or you don't. Right. You're either you're building a symmetrical body or you don't have it. It's not like bodybuilding where you have to flex and squeeze and move around and hide your weaknesses and show your strength. You kind of just gotta stand there and look 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 handsome and you know, <laughs> and I mean I wasn't all about the presentation, but I was all about the discipline that went with it. Yeah. And so, yeah, 2007 was my first fitness model contest. And then 2011, you know, uh, was when I got sick with type one. Yeah. I lost everything. Yeah. And then, you know, ended up going pro after, after I battled the sickness and the depression and all that stuff. Yeah. I noticed you asked our producer here for uh, a can of a soda, just in case uh, uh, a blood drop or blood surgery drop would happen. <laughs> How often does that happen to you being, being type one diabetic? Man, it, it can happen zero one day, but then it can happen five, six times the next day. And the, the goal is that it happens consistently or mm. less often. Mm. So, and how you do that is you, you have to master food. Like I was a nutritionist before I was type one diabetic, but as a nutritionist after being type one, I mean, I've really learned. Really, right? Yeah, food wow. is like the back of your hand. You gotta, you know, you've got to dose, I don't have my insulin on me, but you've got to dose insulin and inject yourself every time you eat. So oh. where I used to eat and kind of graze and snack or just go, like now I got to wait, sit down, count the macros on my plate, right? Count the carbs, the even the fat and the protein, which is a lot of type ones don't do, but I, I'm very meticulous with that. And that's why I've balanced it. And that's why I was able to become the first type one diabetic to ever even make it to Olympia. And then I'm third place with other guys with working pancreases and they're not backstage injecting themselves wow. to absorb their carb up and all that. So, I mean, it to, to go low is not necessarily a bad thing. You just want to have balanced blood sugar. So it's not like a roller coaster mm -hmm. or yeah, you're going to have a miserable life. Like you won't, you talk about being able to talk on the podcast, you won't be able to hold a normal job. And that's where a lot of these type <sighs> ones have, they, they degrade their life and type two diabetics do this too, mm -hmm. because they're operating at less performance than what they should be. And they don't know it because they don't have someone, you know, preaching in their ear saying, oh, you're better than that. And you can live a, a, a high peak performing life, right. if not even better than everyone else. Because right. if you're like me, you learn that, you know, this was, this was a tragedy at one point, but I turned into a triumph by yeah. mastering food understanding macronutrients, getting really in tune with my body. Mm -hmm. And it's, called, it's always gonna, I'm gonna have this disease forever. But the thing is, you know, what do you do with the cards you're dealt, right? Like, yeah. you know, you, you can have a bad hand in poker. Sure. Right? But, but you still win though. But yeah, you can you still, still win, you can still sure. win right? Uh, the, you know, the area of diabetes is affected even on my end on the life insurance side of things because we have clients that want to take care of the families. They want to provide generational wealth. They want to make sure the mortgage is taken care of in case something happens to them, but they have diabetes uh, or, or they're later on in life and they had had a, a, a foot uh, amputated. 
So what, what, what are some things people can be in being uh, proactive? So how do you test for it? Uh, how do you not be reactive to it? And then I want to ask you some follow-up questions about breaking down some macros, especially if you... Yeah, you know. it's, just, it's just all about, number one, let's, let's talk about you right now, uh, the, the potential person you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Hypothetical. Yep. Number one, you've already grown up, so let's think about the youth. Everyone in your life you should educate on preventing type 2 diabetes because it is preventable. Whoever, whatever doctor, whoever's telling you it's genetic that it runs in your family, they're lying to you, all right? Yeah. The way your family eats is genetic. Your culture, uh, Filipino, like sure. Asian, Spanish, white, black, all these, they all have cultural ways they eat, mm -hmm. right? And it, that can start when you're born, right? Your yeah. parents can misfeed you. Yeah. And they don't even know mm -hmm. because it's it's in your family's culture. Oh, we feed them this and this and this. Yeah. Well, you've got to educate yourself and educate the youth. And that's what I do. It's not easy. It's not always fun. Yep. But it is fun when you look at your 15-year-old and they're a healthy, peak-performing sure. nutrition guru who's like, <laughs> oh, no, if friends want to go to McDonald's, you're like, no. I'm not going yeah. to McDonald's. Like, yeah. you guys go ahead and go to McDonald's. I'm going to go over here to the convenience store. I'm going to pick up some boiled eggs and whatever. And I, you don't, people don't need to be freaks like that. Yeah. But, but the knowledge is how you avoid the type two. So a person that's tr just that's dealing with type two diabetes, realize number one, what you're going through, educate the youth so that they don't go through it. So we can stop this generational curse. And then is, is drinking a lot of fats, a lot of sugars. Is that what sort of triggers uh, diabetes? It, it it it's a it's a lot of it's accumulation of a lot of things, but it's basically you just look at inflammation, and that's where you have to educate yourself. Like, well, what what's inflammatory? What do I eat? What do I drink that's inflammatory? Alcohol, yeah, it's very inflammatory. You know, processed sugars, inflammatory. Processed food, everything's packaged. You know, uh, your seed oils, all inflammatory. Like grapeseed, olive oil. Uh, uh, all of all of oil is fine, but it needs to be you know should be a good form. Like try to try okay. to get healthy extra virgin olive oil. Actually, but like okay, like yeah. people get tricked at like here's the, they get tricked in thinking canola oil is healthy. Yeah, canola yeah. oil is very inflammatory. It's in all the packaged food. I eat. I mean, just got off vacation. It's not like I'm yeah. one of these dudes who's like oh, I don't ever sure. eat that stuff. But so I know the resorts. <laughs> yeah, I've educated myself that it is unhealthy, so I try to avoid it, and I try to get my kids to avoid it. You know, it's because knowledge, when you know something's bad for you, if you continue to just consume it and consume it, well, then you're just ignorant. Right? Yeah, you yeah, should, yeah, yeah. And people don't want to admit that, but you, yeah. you should know things that these inflammatory foods and overeating and not exercising is gives you at a risk of having type 2 diabetes, but you can reverse it. So when, when you're younger, it could potentially be a triggering factor because it, was, it came on to you at, in your late 20s. So, so, and some people get when they're 40s and 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. So, so it's a compounding effect of just bad diet then. Yeah. Well, for me, yeah. for me, it was autoimmune. So we, we don't have oh, okay. an answer to why type one and type two are different. Um, it, it's, it's a very detailed conversation to, to talk about how we can avoid type one, because the truth is we don't have a lot of science to support it yet, but you know, if, if we just touch on it real quick, avoiding type one, you know, be careful of the heavy metals, be careful of the ex drinking and eating out of so many plastics, heating up things in the microwave and plastic, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, that, that is, that is my belief. Um, all the, all the artificial stuff, to, you know, too many artificial foods and all that. Uh, but the truth is, I don't, I don't know. I don't have an answer to how to avoid type one diabetes because it is a very delicate subject. Now type two, that's simple. Just avoid, avoid inflammatory foods okay. and get in, you know, 20 to 30 minutes of exercise, you know, four to five times a week. Um, if you overeat and you don't exercise, yeah, you're probably yeah. going to develop pre-diabetes and then type two. Yeah. So you don't see any, you know, any type two diabetics with a, with a flat stomach that consume just, you know, minimal amounts of alcohol. And that are at the they have a, a gym membership down the street that are working out like it, you, you don't see it but right. you see people who are type two that are overweight they went long periods of time without working out yeah um and then they over consume you know over consume food we've, we've covered on this podcast that one of the major factors affecting america today it's being a crisis like a crisis mode in america today is obesity can you touch a little bit about your, your thoughts on obesity and, and how much that is destroying america without america really, really realizing it 
Yeah. I mean, it's, I think everyone has somebody in their family that, that has to deal with that. And the, the truth is obesity is a slow killer. You know, um, it's not just a killer of your life. It's a killer of your lifestyle. It's a killer of your relationships. And I'm, you know, I, there's part of this body positivity movement. There's a, there's a small percentage of it. That's right. Yeah. We do need to treat them with kindness. Mm -hmm. We need to be positive towards yeah, them. Have grace. Yeah. I'm yeah. all about gra yeah, mm -hmm. grace, positivity, yeah. show them love, show yeah. them encouragement mm -hmm. the same way that they would do for you. If you had some type of addiction or issue, right? So th this issue is the same as every other issue. How we react to it is with support, kindness, love, and education. But, um, you know, the fact is that it's not okay. And so do, one way that, uh, you know, I've helped people with obesity and, and weight loss in a lot of different ways. The food, mm -hmm. the food and the exercise are king, right? You also have to realize that there's some people that are so far set in their ways. Yeah. I mean, they can't even walk on a treadmill, right? Um, or there's people that have de developed injuries because they've been overweight for so long. Yeah. So how do we help them, right? It's a it's tough for them. They, they have no energy because they're diabetic or they're pre-diabetic or they're depressed. You know, like I said, it, their their lifestyle has been killed. Yeah. Their life their lifestyle sucks. Yeah. You know, now they might even be used to it. Yeah. They might even be like, oh no, life's fine. Like no, <laughs> look at Matt. Like you, you see how he operates. You see how his tribe operates. That energy. You know, mm -hmm. he's at his age, flipping into the ocean and swimming and kayaking. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, but they right. they would be the same age as you, but they can't do all that. Sure, sure. You know, and they think it's because of money or something like this. Like, no, because a long time ago, you lowered your lifestyle expectations. So, um, you know, with diabetes or with, with, with obesity, the main thing is just education and taking small steps to, to improve your lifestyle. Uh, so you make better choices, but now, yeah, we have the weight loss peptides as well. And that that's where it's, it's become controversial Yeah, because anything is controversial that has crazy, insane results that fast. Yeah, And there's going to be people that abuse these weight loss sure. uh, drugs. But yeah. the fact is literally they're working so well, these GLP um, yeah. and GIP, and now they've even got a triple agonist. You know, you had Manjaro. Ozempic, then Manjaro, and now you got a new one coming out that's not FDA approved and isn't out yet. But you literally have United Airlines posting results that they're using less fuel and that their planes are weighing less because in the last two years I've seen so much weight loss. From it's not it's not like the people's luggage is less. Yeah, it's the weight when you take that's so funny. 40, 50 pounds off of you know fifty people on a plane. They, they less less fuel than to, yeah. to transport the aircraft because people are taking care of themselves, the passengers. Yeah. So you know, so yeah. say say a couple thousand less pounds at the at yeah. very, you know off of one plane, a hundred times a day. Interesting. That's less that. jet fuel costs. Yeah. Yeah. So they're they're happy about it, right? right <laughs> they lose weight. So I, I want to show this uh, uh, in a second, Jordan. I want to show this. This is what I looked like about five years ago, and I was going through gout. I was going through inflammation. I was going through uh, a lot of pain that I had in the military. And one of my best investments, I, I said, if I can make more money, I need to invest back in my body because I wasn't feeling so good. Mm -hmm. And so let's, let's take a look at this picture here. This is on Cancun trip. So I look like, bro. <laughs> oh, wow. Looks like your brother or something. <laughs> <laughs> and my daughter's there. She's still in high school. We're having a blast in Cancun. But it's nothing where how I look and feel. I'm smiling the outside, my brother. And the inside, I'm in pain, man. So I'm, I'm skinny fat here. Yeah. Right? Because people can be overweight. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if that's a real medical category, but I'm skinny fat. Yeah. I may be skinny, but I'm not in shape. I'm not muscular, but I'm not feeling good either. So, but I may not be 300 pounds. So a lot of people think that you got to be overweight not to feel good health-wise. Mm -hmm. So can you, can you talk a little bit about, you know, the skinny fat? Because, you know, a lot of people... People might not like to hear this, but I, I wouldn't have gone on that guy's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you would have had to impress me in some other way. That's just the way people don't, well, oh, you're so judgmental. <laughs> like, well, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we had yeah, some yeah. other amazing things yeah. to offer in our relationship. <laughs> but um, I'm going to bet that that guy didn't have the confidence that he does now. Correct. He didn't have the leadership skills he does now. Yeah. Because you weren't necessarily living it. Yeah. You had a, I'm sure you had a lot of amazing characteristics yeah. but there were some missing pieces for sure and that's why i love hearing stories like that because mm -hmm. if you haven't ever been at your pin pinnacle physically mm -hmm. you're missing out 
And bro, I'm still getting there. I, but I love the process of working towards it, man. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the whole process of being in the gym. And because a lot of people today um, will never learn how to push the limits because they don't even know what the limits are. Like you, you mm -hmm. in, in, in a, when, I, when I would see trainers, when I see fitness competitors, to me, I'm watching how everybody eats and how they work out and the barbecues they have to say no to and say, it smells good, tastes good, mm, but no. What? Big time discipline. Mm -hmm. So you, ha you have a very, even though it's very individualized, but it's also a very highly disciplined type of sport. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I got from it. And that's what I, I had to, you know, talk a lot of my friends and family. And of course, then now the, so, the social media grew when I started. <laughs> that was when Instagram came out. It was yeah. 2011 when, yeah. I, when I first did my show, my first show. 2012, Instagram's taken off. And yeah, you got a, you've got a lot of people that question the odd, ha, the odd uh, lifestyle of bodybuilding, right? But, you know, what I run of building, we're yeah. building, right? right. We're, we're trying to stay, you know, as healthy and as presentable as possible. Um, but the, the whole thing is, mm -hmm. it's not just about the body that you're building. It was about my daily habits. Now, in my 20s, man, I was a dude. I had been, I built up to where I'm training right alongside Hall of Fame wide receivers, Donald Driver, you know. So cool. Well, He's right dude, here now. He's up in uh, yeah. Flower Mound, right? Uh-huh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I did some sessions with him in, in Flower Mound when I was a trainer and, and, and a bunch of other Cowboys. There's been some Cowboys that have come by my house and trained with me. That's great. Um, so uh, cool, man. Cowboys you know, quarterback, not Dak, uh, Ben DiNucci. Um, you know, Jamil, Jamil some Flower, uh, Showers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Kayvon Frazier's right there. Kayvon, yeah, my, yeah, yeah for you know, sure. Kayvon. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I'm, but in my twenties, I was working out with those guys. Yeah. Like I mean, wow. I, I could work and I could train. I was nonstop endurance, strong, and so that's you know, that's when I realized is that you know if you put in the work physically, yeah. Yeah. You, you just like in business, you put in the work. Yep. Don't ever doubt what you can become. Mm -hmm. Like because, but mm -hmm. if you're not doing the work every day, you'll never know. Yep. And if you don't have the belief, like I, I never had a belief. Like oh yeah, you know what. I'm going to be an IFPB pro and one day I'm going to get type one diabetes and one day I'm going to, you know, be on covers of magazines and one day, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to make all this money and I'm going to have, you know, multiple houses. And I mean, that, that wasn't, that wasn't my thought process. It wasn't yeah. my goal. It was just first thing, I believe this is what God wants me to be doing is operating at a high performance and helping other people operate at a high performance. And if I do that, I go to sleep happy every night. And I, I can change a, a few lives at a time. Great. Well, that's what's funny. God equips you for what for, for what you're going to be doing down the road. But you're not going to be equipped if you're not yeah. doing all the things you know you should be doing. Yeah. And so that's like in my 20s, and I'm 43 now. But in my 20s, when I'm working out so hard and training, I mean, and, you know, I'm not making a ton of money. Uh, I think I'd made up to 100000 one year. And I thought I was rich. <laughs> sure. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, could, I could do cool stuff and buy stuff. I had a cool apartment and a cool truck. And I, I thought that was big time. But all that was equipping me, all that hard training and working with CEOs and and, and high level people equipped me for mm. boom. Instagram launches in 2012. I had just been sick for a whole year where I had lost it all. Mm. I lost money. My uh, a relationship got dumped. Because I lost the money, my car, I lost my car, mm. car got repossessed, had to move out of my apartment, and I lost, you know, most important thing, my health and my confidence. Mm. But during that time was also when I went back to God because I was falling away. I had fall, completely fallen away uh, in my late 20s with, with a lot of partying, drugs. Yeah. Uh, my, I was focused on the wrong thing. And boom, but all, all those things in my 20s equipped me to when I got healed and I figured out what was wrong with me, you know, disease wise, I just sprinted like all the, the every, Amen. Yeah, I sprinted straight to success. It was literally, I couldn't, every day I couldn't believe the opportunities that were coming my way. And that wouldn't have happened and I wouldn't have been equipped yeah. had I not done so many things right in my 20s. Wow. You know? <laughs> like you'll go through these valleys. Yeah. You will. You, you Everyone's going to have valleys. You know, and but the depth of those valleys deter is determined on you know how you're aligned yeah. with 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 the spiritual side of things with God. Yeah, the, the, the mountains inspire us, but the valleys mature us. Mm -hmm. What what uh, what uh, what was that God moment for you? Uh, what would you recognize there in the pit in the valley? How is God speaking to you? How is God moving to to you and through you? Oh man, well it, it was so I read a book about the Holy Spirit. 
I never really understood what the Holy Spirit was. And uh, probably like a lot of people that listen, like, what? I mean, I got God. I know about Jesus. What's the Holy Spirit? So I read this book about the Holy Spirit. And it understood. I was just, I just started praying a little different. I was like, instead of, you know, was pr praying to, to my brother who was guiding me along this hard time. And I li listen, the, the, you know, I think you're asking like, what was a spirit, what, what was spoken to me yeah. when I was in that valley? Every single day, my mind would tell me, or I would hear the voice, at, you know, it literally was crazy because mind you, I also was depth uh, or uh, sleep deprivation. So part of me thought I was going a little crazy. I, mean, I wasn't sleeping at night, not at all. Like I would wake up and I would have a piece of paper and I'd tally how many times I'd go pee in the middle of the night. Wow. It would be 15 plus what? every night. So you're not getting deep rim sleep. You're not getting any no, rim exactly. sleep. No. So after a few months, yeah, I mean, first, I know what, you know, some of these veterans and people go through that are forced to go yeah. through sleep deprivation. Yeah. yeah, you're a little nuts, man. Yeah. And, um, but I would hear this like, you're strong, but you're gonna be stronger. And I remember thinking, like, I just wake up in the middle of the night, like, I'm strong. And I would start repeating it over and over and, and out loud, like, I'm yeah. strong and I'm going to be stronger. Like, I'm strong. And I would, it was just constantly in my head yeah. from, from February to September 2011. And then, boom, you know, uh, for someone who focused so much on strength and fitness and, and in leadership and to lose it all, you know, I didn't feel strong. I was, I was withered away. I looked, I looked like a crackhead. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I had, uh, my face was sunken in. I'm, I'm two, 210 right now. Imagine me 145. Wow. Like, so, yeah. but boom, you know, that, that, that thought and that, you know, if it was the Holy Spirit, God tell me whatever it was saying, you're strong. Don't think you're not strong right now, but you're going to be stronger. Boom. I never thought about that. I didn't know the IFBB was going to have physique. I never, I didn't like, I didn't never wanted to be a bodybuilder at all. I yeah. trained like an athlete. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, boom, I get diagnosed. They prescribe me the meds I need. I feel alive again in a matter of 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and then I suddenly start to get strength yeah. physically yeah. and mentally. And then the guy who was living with his, you know, living with a, a very abusive, just, just not, a, not a good father, right? He's still addicted to drugs. I mean, everything in my life right then was, was just crazy. You know, living with someone that didn't, didn't respect me. Uh, having no money, having to alienate my friends because I had no confidence to go out, you know, and mm -hmm. look, and then having to go from the party guy, the fitness party guy, to now this elite guy, right? It was just an easy transition. And boom, I, I got my pro card uh, in nine months in the IFBB. So like that whole, that whole mind, uh, uh, that whole thing that I heard in my head, like you're strong and you're going to be stronger. Yeah. yeah I, had, I was stronger at squats, deadlifts, but everything was stronger. Everything became stronger. My finances became stronger. I I thought I had money back then because I made it, you know, uh, would make like eighty to one hundred thousand a year. Well, my finances got stronger. Amen. You know, and now I'm getting paid. You know, 2012, 2013, I'm getting paid to endorse companies. Yeah. I'd never believed I could do that at all. Wow. You know, instead of making you know eight eight thousand dollars a month, double that, Love triple it. that, quadruple that. You know, and it just kept growing. So everything became stronger, and God was right. You know. I got stronger in every aspect of my life, but I had to go through that that rough that rough time. Amen to that, brother. I, you and I share a very uh, uh, politically outspoken pastor, uh, Pastor Keith Kraft. He makes no bones about how he feels and how he leans and how the Word of God inspires him to see America what it is today, not from his own personal bias, but through the through the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And we just went through a, a tragic last few days. I was in Bora Bora. I thought it was a joke that assassination attempt to happen on Trump and to actually see it because when I went to see CNN and some of the websites, it said he just fell on stage. We had spotty internet back then. So that's why I thought it was a hoax. It was a joke. It was a, you know, yeah. Photoshop. And then to follow up with, it was just fell on stage. And then uh, two hours then we finally got around Wi-Fi. It was legit. So what's your thoughts? What's your initial reactions as a, as a man of faith, as an entrepreneur, as an American, What's your thoughts was going on with a potential assassination attempt on uh, the, the the presidential candidate on the Republican side, Donald Trump? Well, first of all, it was funny. We were both on vacation. So I was coming back. I was coming back on vacation too. So like, <laughs> I, yeah, I was like, oh, you know, you don't want to go through stuff like this on vacation. Yeah. But what's funny, every time we go on a family vacation, there's something crazy that happens like this. And uh, I don't know if that means anything. But the first thought about 
the assassination attempt on Trump, mm -hmm. my first thought was, we need to pray. Yeah. Like we need to pray for this country. We need to pray for the decisions people are making. And, and that's the first thought because yeah. that would 10, well, let's say 10, 12 years ago, that would have yeah. been my thought. First thought yeah. would have been like a lot of people rage, yeah. pi you know, yeah. being pissed off or right. the first thought would have been conspiracy theory and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Like, no, your, your leadership driven men of faith. First thing is like, okay, let's pray. Yep. Cause th th that's the most powerful thing you can do. Yeah. You know, yeah, right. and then like, well, what about the literal stuff? What about actually taking action? Okay, no, that comes after you pray, yeah, bro. Right, right. Like, you know, for, you know, if you're not praying over major decisions, like how am I going to respond to our president getting shot at? Yeah. Then I don't want to hear what you have yeah. to say. Right. But you know, what's great. Like last night, I don't know. I watched a little bit of the, the Republican National Convention, which I've never, I never watched that. Before. Exactly. You know how many views? Yeah, me neither. They got views last Crazy. night. Crazy. Ellie, everyone, I think a lot of people turned in last night because they wanted to see Trump, want to see how they were going to respond. But anyways, that's the first, I was happy to see some of those other leaders. I saw Yunkin, uh, you know, uh, governor from Virginia. Mm -hmm. I saw, um, what's his name? Scott. Who I thought was going to be, yeah, yeah. This guy? Yep. yeah, he could have been a great VP candidate. Maybe he'll yep. be in the future. Maybe he'll yep. be president. But like all these guys were talking about, their yep. first reaction too was to pray. Yeah, I was like, good for them. Like Amen. we're getting some better leadership. Yeah, on on the Republican side of thing. And I'm not, I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. I'm, I'm for who's the best candidate, right? I think it's silly we have two options. But right now, obviously, some of the best options are on that Republican side of things. And, and you know, I love. So that's my first thought was. Um, I don't know who's trying to kill him. I don't know if this is any type of uh, deeper state thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we, yep. you could dive into all the different things. Yep. But my first thought was that God intervened that situation because, like, I've almost nearly died a few times. I literally, it just means God's not done with Trump yet. I mean, a millimeter right. away, he, he turned his head, and that's yeah. the fact. And, yep. um, then you get in all of this stuff. Like, did he have a proper protection? No. Like, you yeah, know, yeah. super you know, service. All yeah, stuff, yeah. I, but I, I've, I've met with Trump and, you know, I've, I've talked to his, you know, Trump Jr. Yeah. And I think the public doesn't realize they're like, well, why they want, they expect perfection from these elite mm -hmm. yeah. leaders, right. right? They're not, they're just like us. That's right. <laughs> if you sit down, no, talking with Trump, no, he's different. That yeah. I've never met a man like that. But he still can make lapses in his judgment on who his security detail is. It's possible. Sure. So yeah, I want to see Trump, you know, step up security. Whoever's in charge, who talks to him, and who was ever in charge of the Secret Service, I just think there's a, a insane lap of judgment. You know, poor decisions were made. I think from everyone because, you know, most people wouldn't say that about Trump. But I mean, he's the leader. You got to check your security detail, man. Right. Whoever's answer, whoever you hired to be in charge of them, like that shouldn't have happened. Yep. And yep. you know that's what we can learn from it. But I'm not, I'm not being critical. It's just we all, when, when stuff happens to us, yep. you know, like if somebody was to try to sabotage Matt, you, you, I don't think Matt's gonna. Why did y'all let that happen? No, mm -hmm. you're gonna be like, well, man, why did I let this happen with my leadership? Right. And yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on them. But at the end of the day. I've got to be careful about who I'm letting, you know, uh, oversee the people that could possibly sabotage. That's right. Right. Yeah. It may not be depending on Secret Service. Have your own personal security detail. You know, if uh, and the thing they've attempted to character assassinate him didn't work. They tried to character assassinate people around him that didn't work. They tried to financially assassinate him that didn't work. They tried to politically in lawfare or you know in court slow him down that didn't work. And so Tucker Carlson called when he interviewed him earlier this year. So the only attempt they got right now to slow you down is to really, you know, take you out. Yeah. And here it is. Here it is. And so, um, uh, uh, did you see the uh, the video about the prophecy this past uh, uh, this prophet did three months ago? He said in a dream. Yeah. yeah was, uh, weird, right? That's, weird. That's, weird thing for that to happen. Th to see that guy is still to see a guy is still working. I believe in that stuff, type yeah. of stuff, though. I mean, that's it. Just a lot of people sent me that, and they're just amazed. And I guess it still is amazing. Mm -hmm. That's when, when, man, would you, would you spend some, like with me, <laughs> why did I hear voices over and over in my head that I'm going to be right. stronger? That's right. Because God will, people just, if they don't see him, they don't believe, but just, you got to believe yeah. you can get messages. Yeah. You might have a dream. 
a, a prophecy coming through that random guy. That stuff's normal in God's world, man. <laughs> like you can, you can see meth and crack addicts turn into millionaires, right? And uh, so if you can't think that he can deliver messages to us sometimes, yeah. to and, and it's going it, to, you know. Yeah, that's right. It's not a coincidence. God is still in the miracle business, mm -hmm. period. And uh, to, to see God still continue to work. And by the way, we do pray. And the hardest thing for me to learn as a, as a believer is to pray for our enemies. Woo! That's hard. Right? That's hard. Hard to pray against or for people that want to come against you. Yep. <laughs> I asked Pastor she, Keith that. Yeah, I got to check my DM, see if he answered. But I asked him, I was like, I know there's some passages in Romans that talk about respecting your leaders and yeah. you know paying your taxes and yeah. you know, that, that God has divined them to be leadership. I'm like, did God put Biden in? Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure, bro? Yeah, like, yeah but, exactly. Like, I, okay, so there's a certain level of respect. Yeah. But I wanted to hear, I was like, I got to get some leadership guidance on this. Like, how yeah. are we supposed to respect every single leader? Yeah. Like Kim Jong-un. How are we supposed to, we got to mm -hmm. respect him? Yeah, he wants to take us out. You know, China yeah. wants to take us over the world. Gavin you know? Newsom, we got to respect him. Exactly. God, please, man, I'm struggling with this. <laughs> that's right. And that's where God needs to intervene. Because it, it can't be, if we're expecting man to man, just me, mano y mano to help you change, it ain't going to happen. You know, he's got to have a uh, encounter. He's got God's got to put him in the belly of the whale. You know, uh, you got to you got to put him in that situation. Mm -hmm. um, I, lo I love this man, and uh, it could have been a much different America that you and I would have returned to if that assassination did happen. Uh -huh. Imagine America having a civil war, man. You know, it's a much different scenario that you and I have would have returned to from vacation. Um, Absolutely. Other area I want to talk to you about, um, how, in, in your, you know, a lot of guys who watch our channel are, are guys that are in sales leadership, driving sales teams and building uh, companies. Um, what's, what's, uh, how have you established your company with Transcend? You know, it seems like you're also, um, you're also in the business of recruiting ambassadors to represent your brand too as well. So how have you, you know, um, uh, recruited your, your peers, your fellow competitors to be your ambassadors? How's that process of building Transcend? How's that process of building a company? Um, well, yeah, I mean, we started very little revenue. I remember when um, when these partners approached me, there was probably four employees. There's two. There's three owners and one employee, and they had a small investment. There's actually some guys here in Frisco, actually. Cool. And um, yeah, they they were having problems getting views and visibility. They had done about a hundred thousand dollars in revenue over a few months right but they had they had lists they had patient lists so they they had some previous business they were coming from other companies but you know part of what i saw it, the vision of of us growing was i've got uh number one we've got something that the people need which is at home functional medicine at home health care uh that that is different from big pharma stuff mm -hmm. you know we've got like hormone optimization and the innovation of all these different peptides to help healing and anxiety depression sleeplessness erectile dysfunction uh fertility yeah. inflammatory issues healing like you name it we can yeah. help people yeah so i said dude i love helping people my name is jason my mm -hmm. mom prayed over me before i was born she said god named me she didn't name me and jason was a healer in the bible mm -hmm. and i knew that this was a big moment for me to to not just help people with fitness and their and their health choices but now in in the medical world that i'm very hesitant about the medical world the same medical world i saw over medicate my grandmother who you know rest in peace who was, she brought out a bag of medication i mean way over medicated <laughs> you know i mean she didn't get the help she needed so i was like if i maybe we need more thoughtful leaders and more preventative leaders in healthcare. Yeah. I said, so this is where I want to go. It wasn't just like, oh, let me post on the social media. Yeah. And, you know, that's why it was hard because they got a lot of criticism. People thought peptides were steroids, and they're not. They're not. They're not. Uh, peptides are chains of amino acids that create a specific response in the body. And I knew that. And the reason why I started researching peptides is because insulin is a peptide, and insulin's wow. kept me alive wow. since 2011. Without without that peptide of insulin, type one diabetics would be dead. Right, wow. we die by before the age of ten, maybe even maybe even five. So, yes, I like the innovation in certain parts of medication. So it's not steroid; it's it's a peptide. It's, yeah, which no. triggers a joke. Okay. No, there's not. There's nothing anabolic. There's nothing. You know, uh, there there is there side effects from some of them. Yeah, there's muscle gain peptides, but 
if you think about it, it's like water. We can pour water in this cup. We can pour water in a long cup, a short cup. It's the the water is going to form to whatever we place it in, mm -hmm. and that's what peptides do. Is they're 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 going to fix a problem or attempt to fix a problem that has been created from years of abuse or genetic issues or whatever, right? But it's not going to synthetically just boom inject you. What one one example would be like uh, growth hormone, right? I mean. It, it's prescribed for kids and different people with like multiple sclerosis or muscular dystrophy. Well, then bodybuilders use it because it enhances muscle and burn fat and they can literally become a bigger boned, larger human, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. I can't take growth hormone. It's, it doesn't, a type one diabetic cannot take it. It causes insulin resistance. Wow. All right. And it's got a bunch of side effects. It can grow tumors. It can grow cancer. Um, you know, it, it has its effect. It has, it should yeah. be medically overseen, but then the peptide option for that something like tesamorelin and ipamorelin, right? You, you say growth hormone increases inflammation. Tesamorelin lowers inflammation, wow. right? They both heal and they can yeah. help you healing, but tesamorelin and ipamorelin, it has, you know, basically zero side effects, much less side effects. It's clinically and FDA proven to burn stomach fat. Yeah. And so, you know, I look at, I look at those two, you know, those two medical, um, options right yeah. and then i started seeing you know peptides have so many different so yeah we can we can help people you know get jacked but it's not it's not like the same rate of a steroid so i, I have a little bit of a speed round here for you okay because i know you're, you're an expert in this yeah, type of yeah. stuff so i've got some categories of some potential uh, goals that people may have in their in their in their physical life yeah uh, health health wise and i want you to have three or four different say top three sure. peptides you recommend for them to go research at Mm -hmm. uh, not to take, but to research and find more information in detail. Okay. Cool. All right. So number one, I was a hard gainer. So what top three peptides would I need to potentially look at if I want to gain muscle mass? Okay. So hard gainer. Um, the one you can look at is something like ibutamorin, right? It, it'll increase growth hormone levels really fast. You've got to have clinical oversight because um is, that, it, is it a peptide yeah peptide okay. Okay. Uh, well it's it, it might be more of a uh, in a different category but it's, it's the same as a peptide basically so ibutamorin or mk677 will increase hunger for a hard gainer you will want to eat so for somebody that doesn't want to eat <laughs> yeah. this isn't for the person who's overweight and i'll remind you all these i recommend that's why you need clinical oversight you need doctor supervision or you need a specialist you need a clinic somebody you yeah. know yeah, i do consultations as well you need somebody to oversee these things because you know mk677 will help you gain weight you'll gain a rapid amount of weight maybe the most muscle gain out of any of the peptides but it, it's got a few side effects you need to have healthy blood sugar levels mm. so i would say mk677 um tesamorelin and ipramelin as well you know it'll be tesamorelin will have a slower weight gain mm -hmm. but you'll have can sit, you won't lose the muscle, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll peak out your growth hormone levels at the same time, help with recovery, sleep, uh, improve blood work, you know, lower cholesterol. I mean, testosterone has a lot of benefits. That's probably why it's probably the most expensive peptide. Got it. What about uh, the opposite to that? What weight loss? Weight loss. Um, People get ripped, shredded, drop weight pounds. Well, the biggest success I've seen is two. Testofenzine is a, is a pill. As it comes in a capsule. Tesafensine is also for cognitive function. Um, it, a lot of these peptides, like I'll name a few benefits, but like if they were to look them up, man, you see five, 10 benefits. Like what is this? Like 10 things in one? Yeah, they're, they're, they have- So it's a pill, it's not an injection. Yeah, okay. tesafensine is a, is a great weight loss pill. You see extreme fat loss with it. Uh, it, it lowers your your desire to want to eat a lot. And it, it's, I like it, man, because I, I struggle with energy. And so, like, I'm not trying to go reach for, you know, a lot of these people, there's poor habits of reaching for way too much caffeine or Adderall and all that stuff. Yeah. And yeah, those things will work, but what they, they, you crash. And, and, and obviously, the Adderall has a t very terrible side effects. Of course. <laughs> but tesafensine, um, it does, you know, there can be some irritability with it. But mm -hmm. for the most part, I've seen when compounding pharmacies make it, my, the way my compounding pharmacy makes it, there, you don't have the irritability. And this stuff just sets you on fire and you burn fat. Your focus. So, tesafensine for weight loss and probably terzepatide. Terzepatide is a double agonist. That's mm. what everyone's, it's a, you know, compounded version of Manjaro. Right. And my wife took that. Um, we, you know, clinically overseen, she lost a crazy amount of fat after the, after four kids. Gotcha. She was like, all right, we're done. So, Love those it. two. I got one more category and I have one follow up question. 
uh, to to your family. Um, but this peptide category, uh, brain function, brain clarity. What oh, yeah. peptides would it help? So man, that's uh, that's probably one of my favorites. And then I mean, if I had to take one, I had only I would probably take the cognitive function because. Uh, I've taken care of my body. So, you know, muscle wise and fat loss rise, I know what to do to alter yeah. food. I don't have to take the peptides to alter my body composition. But cognitive function, yeah, there's something you, you can struggle with from mm -hmm. uh, you, your youth, your teens, your 20s, your 30s. Yep. You're, you're, you weren't eating perfect or you're on medications or something that it can, you know, yep. uh, cause inflammatory brain issues that yep. you think you're just, oh, I'm just losing my memory. I'm forgetting people's names all the time. Or I don't remember. I can't multitask at work anymore. Yep. Um, that's not supposed to happen, dude. Yep. Like, it's a, <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, we're meant to be. You know, well thinking, yeah. high operating men and women until until we're old, right? Mm -hmm. And so what you got people with cognitive function issues at twenty two. So I like dihexa. Uh, Tessafencine is another one. It goes both ways. Wow! It's like if I, I'm going to it's we're working on too, yeah, yeah we're working on creating both. So you've got the fat loss and the and the cognitive function of tessafencine as well as the cognitive function and the and the the lowering of brain inflammation in dihexa. Yep. So dihexa is great, like uh, Alzheimer's patients, people who have severe or you know early Alzheimer's, it's, it was originally made to slow that down or possibly even- Reverse it. Completely reverse wow. it, yeah. So that, that, I'm not, yep. not saying that happens all the time, but I've, cool. I've seen it happen with my friend's dads that even placebo, he's like, I'm not even gonna tell him because he was not a believer in this. He's like, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna give it to my mom. Dihexa. Yeah, and, okay. it, and it, he's like, a week later, he's like, man, my mom's saying that he's like talking better. He wow. just called me. He hasn't called me and had a normal conversation in a while. Wow. So yeah, dihexa, but I'll, it, I'm a double, triple strength dihexa guy. Love it. Okay. Okay. Um, you look good. You feel good. Now you're making money. You got a business. Time for a wifey. And um, that's how I felt when I started recreating my life, right? Okay, I'm in this stage of my life. I'm going to build a family. Um, and I thought about a potential women these days that might be marriage material. And I saw on your profile that uh, you had a contrast of what a, the best woman in your life would be. So uh, Jordan, if you wouldn't mind playing that video, let's take a look at this uh, beautiful example of what to look for. <laughs> what is this? Oh, uh, you gotta give him that oh. hump to and spend all that night, you get me? <laughs> Versus. Yeah. So this is your, her, uh, your uh -huh. first, your first year of dating. Yeah, it's probably 2012. If you like this song. So she's she's hooking up your house. Yeah. Yeah, okay. she's just, you know, she, I mean, that was her, that's just her. Yeah. Right? That's who she was. And sometimes we don't know why we're so attracted to someone. <laughs> and, and to be honest, I'd never had a woman come yeah. over to my house. You yeah. know, I mean, I, I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't the perfect you know, Christian. So I had, I had girlfriends that we lived together yeah. and all that wasn't ever long term, but you know, I had women over at the house and they never acted like that. Wow. And I didn't even know. They I act like the first one, the, yeah. the, the first one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In your twenties, that's, that's the Hakua girls. Yeah. Like, you know, woman of your youth and your stupidity yeah. versus your maturity. Yeah. You, you now bring a, bring a wife into your Yeah. Yeah. And no criticism life. against that girl. I mean, that girl that went, went famous, you know, it's just like, you know, I personally, even in my twenties, mm. if I had a, I was mm. never interested in a woman who talked like that publicly. Yeah, behind yeah. the scenes, oh yeah, sure. You know, what do they say? Uh, 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 a leading the, the streets, <laughs> but a freak in the sheets. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that, and and uh, you know, that's what I found, man. That's, <laughs> that's ludicrous, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 and uh, that, that's what I found. But well, yeah, she came over, and I just love, and, and she goes viral, man. She got another video, she twenty seven yeah. million views, and yeah. when she shows her loving, uh, just loving desire to be a uh, provider or nurturer yeah. for our family, like it just freaks some of the younger generation out. And so, yeah, that situation, I was just like, listen, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying this versus that, but I'm saying, yeah, if her first instinct is not to come over to your place and, you know, make sure that um, you're, you're taken care of, I mean, yeah. she doesn't need to come over and just clean your place, right? right, right. But that should be within her. Yeah. And, and, and some people think, oh, you need to wait till marriage to do that. Yeah. Dude, I'm not waiting for, uh, to, to see the characteristics of my perfect woman so after marriage yeah are y'all crazy yeah you need to show you, men are constantly showing what their capabilities are before marriage women are as well 
And when I saw her do that, yeah, people were like, why'd you film it? I'm like, yeah. because first of all, social media wasn't even massive then, yeah. but I had to show my friends. I had to show off. I'm like, look at this. Like yeah. we, we woke up and yeah. she tidied the bed and cleaned up the kitchen yeah. and she does it to this day. She yeah. did it this morning. Yeah. Like, you know, the thing that she had to do with me when we were dating is that, uh, cause we, you know, our guys are trained a lot of our sales forces part-time. So a lot of our guys would be trained on evenings and weekends. And one Saturday we'd be, we know we were going to about 11 midnight on a Saturday night. And I'm dating my girlfriend, Sheena. She's like, babe, you had no training on insurance agency until midnight on a Saturday. I swear, babe, I swear, I swear to God, I mean, I mean, no joke. So she comes in on a Saturday. She sees that we're actually really training. We're really there. We're really you know, in it. And so she sends me a text around 6 o'clock later on that night because she leaves the office. She goes home because we're not living together yet. She goes, babe, I just left the house. I want to let you know the house is filled with a, you got a fridge full of beer and you got a bucket of chicken. Ready Ooh, to go. Bucket of chicken. Yeah, bucket of chicken. <laughs> I'm like, I said it to my guys. Yo, dog, check this out. This is what Sheena did. Yeah. Like, dog, you better wife her up. Yeah. You know, but uh, there's something about when a woman shows those, displays that, because she take care of, she can take care of man. She can take care of her family, her children. Fair, fair, for me, I, I'm, I share, you'd probably say the same thing too. Yeah. It's a very attractive quality. Yeah. In a it's, woman. it's rare. You can't train yeah. for that. Yeah, she she was probably, and I talk to her mom and dad about all the time. I tell them yeah. how grateful I am. I say yeah. thank you for being such great parents. Right. I That's tell right. them that all the time. And her mom, I love her. She's the one to introduce us, right? Wow. She was such a pers a personable, social, yeah, kind person. Yeah. You know, that's that's when I met her the same day. Right. Yeah. Went through that whole valley. Went through that yeah. long period, and then. I went, I was abstinent. Mm -hmm. I haven't been abstinent for, for a year or wow. longer and, and since I was a teenager. And, but I, yeah, I meet her mom at a pool party at Encore Beach Club. Yeah. I had just- In Vegas? Yeah. <laughs> Let's, yeah. So every time I was at Encore Beach yeah. Club, yeah. the previous five, six years, yeah. I would have been wasted. Wow. I exactly. Would been, I would have been high on ecstasy or taking a drug or I'd have been drunk as a skunk, <laughs> like a fool. Yeah. And yeah, you know, that's what I thought was cool. But then yeah. here I am, Encore Beach Club, sober, not drinking, just won my IFBB Pro card. Yeah. And then I'm standing in a pool and I see a beautiful, yeah. you know, older woman and, you know, start talking to her because she's with our group and she goes in her deep deep cajun accent goes you gotta meet my daughter she's like you're gonna marry her someday and she was joking but yeah, yeah. come to find out so like that but because of her mom her, you yeah. know her mom and the way she's always been yeah. and her dad the way he's always been right she's a a, a, a you know a reciprocal of that yeah right like she and so yeah people always say like man how did, Said, they, they think we force our women to stay at home and do the things like no man they kind of force us to not to to you know to not help them right, I'm right. Sure. Like, <laughs> i try to get up and cook she's like no i got this yeah. i got this yep amen to that well that's jason posture for you i can have another hour conversation with him but uh, i want to know what you guys are thinking what's your follow-up questions to this you agree with his statements you don't agree we want to know let's have the conversation happen you want to bring jason back again Please let us know in the comment section below. Jason, what's one thing, 30 seconds, what's one thing in the time such as this, we have less than 90 days to the next election. We have people struggling financially with inflation. People are in business today. 30 seconds. What's one message you want to share to America right now to help lead them into the next wave, the next best version of themselves? You know, I feel like we've skipped over this for too long. And I've, I've been blessed to be able where people ask me that question, like, you know, how do I get to your level? How do I reach success? Would you have any tips for me? If it, you know, and, and that's how you know you're starting to do God's plan Amen. in life. Whenever people ask me, hey, how can I get where you're at? Because nobody ever asked me that before I was 30, right? And it always frustrated me. But now, so you get where I'm at, or you get further where I'm at, or you get where you're supposed to be. You get where where Matt's at, or further where Matt's at. Mm -hmm by establishing your relationship with God and understanding how you're supposed to live kingdom wise. How do you do that? Cause a lot of people, dude, you got to, what I've been directing people to lately is, uh, is just the Bible apps, That's right? There's a daily, it, right. it, it's just a little bit every single day. And it takes you all the way through that. It, 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 you can share it with people. So where you think you don't understand how to lead other people to Christ or other people to peace and success in life. Dude, that you can easily share that. Yeah, like what you yeah. read in the morning. If it hits you, send it to. I sent it to like five friends this morning, right? And they're all believers, but some of them are kind of back and forth, yeah. right? They're struggling yeah. with relationships. Yeah, thirty-eight plus, no marriage, no yeah. kids yet. Just yeah, because yeah, God, this follow this lead. So you won't. All your most stable, successful people with the most happiness 
are following God's plan and they have a relationship with the Lord and then they they understand how to read the Bible and decipher that to help you make decisions. All these motivational speakers, yeah. all these you know talking heads you see on social media, they rip the Bible. It's literally they rip yeah. it, but they, they try to claim it as their own. They claim their own <laughs> quote and all that. Yeah. Like it's literally. It's yeah. the plagiarism. Secrets. The secrets. It, yeah, like you, know, no, you just change the words. <laughs> it's all in yeah. Proverbs, Psalms. Like it's it, it it, it, that. all over the Bible. Yeah. So that's it, man. It's like I wish people, you know, people want the free, free key. Like, oh well, no, I just want something really simple. Yeah. Sorry, it's not going to be that simple. Yeah. But it is as simple as, you know, download the Bible app or read your Bible, and that's that's why I tell people the Bible app because it takes them through it. And if you're a new believer or if you're somewhat struggling, going back and forth with your faith, the yeah. Bible can be complicated Amen. just to open it up, right. right? And reading it front to back and can yeah. help you. Yeah. So in the beginning, you need to be in church. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Be, find a, like me and you, man, we have some yeah. great leadership at our church. It's very, it's just, I couldn't say anything more about Elevate Life yeah. and how it's changed my life. But that's it, man. Just to, just spend time with the Lord. Spend right. time in the Bible, and you'll be surprised what success comes your way. Amen. Matthew says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. And I pray for those of you watching this, that if you seek the kingdom of God first, then all these things shall be added unto you. But as Jason had mentioned, but you got to seek. And if you're willing to seek, he says, Hey, I've been here all the whole time through. I'm glad you're talking now. So please seek. Download the Bible app. Great point. That being said, subscribe, like, drop a comment. Till we meet again, continue to smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.